Welcome back all you Minties, this is the Uncanny Omar from Nearman Condition, and join me today for an advanced look at some of these recent Marvel trades and collected editions from Marvel Comics, so please stay tuned. And before we look at any of these books, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these books. These books, with the exception of this masterwork, are due out in the direct market on November 4th. This masterwork's already out, that's why I said, with the exception of this book. So, all of these are out in the direct market on November 4th, and then a couple weeks later in the book market. Now, let's take a look at Amazing Spider-Man Sins Rising first. Now this is volume 9 of the Nick Spencer Amazing Spider-Man collection. We'll look at all those spines here in a little bit together. But I did want to point that out, that this is volume 9, even though it doesn't say that on the cover. And I've seen it solicited different places with just Sins Rising. So this does include the Sins Rising issue 1 one-shot. And it's a little bit of a spoiler, even though you really don't know, in case... Um, you're not familiar with the character, but it is the return of a character known as the Sin Eater. Is it the original Sin Eater, or is it a brand new person taking over that mantle, or that hood rather? And the Sin Eater, of course, has ties to the death of Gene D. Wolf, and of course, even the making of Venom. But I will leave you to find all that out for yourself. And of course, I'm sure you saw it coming because if you've been reading Nick Spencer's run, you know that this character right here, Kindred, has been playing a big role in Peter Parker's just miserable life, right? Like the bad Parker luck that he's had. So we don't know the identity of that character, but we do know that he has ties to Peter Parker and he could be some kind of demon from hell. Not sure 100%, but... I'm sure all of that will be answered in issue 50. Missing from this collection, with the exception of the cover, is the phenomenal Ryan Otley. However, we have, like, I think four or five different artists, one of them being Mark Bagley. This gentleman right here, who is no stranger to Spider-Man. So, if you are a big fan of Mark Bagley, he has been drawing issues of Amazing Spider-Man. And I think Patrick Gleason is the gentleman that has taken over the run after Ryan Otley leaves. I think he's leaving in issue 49, if I'm not mistaken. That might be his last issue. And besides that one shot, it also contains issues 44 through 47 of Amazing Spider-Man, the Nick Spencer run. I am definitely censoring that final page because that leads into other things in the next volume. So here are some of the variants that we have on the right-hand side. And the one variant on the back by Mark Bagley. The book has 136 pages and retails for $17.99. So here is Venom Epic Collection. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. If you've not seen my wife's amazing review of this book, you're really missing out. She loves this character. She loves Spider-Man. And she did an overview. As soon as this book came in, she swiped it out of my hands and said, I want to do a review of that book. And who am I to say no to her? Uh, the book retails for $39.99, has 472 pages, and I'm just going to flip a little bit through here. One of the things that I did notice, though, just on the, my copy, is that um, the cover is starting to curve just a little bit when I left it laying down. Because I, I had it laying uh, around for a couple of days, and I don't know. I'm not saying quad quad pro at all. I'm just saying I found it really weird that it was starting to curve just a little bit. Could just be my copy. Um, again, if you want to check out what exactly this contains, check out my wife, The Astonishing Melanie's Review. The link is right up above. I just posted it. And it's got phenomenal artwork by, of course, Todd McFarlane, the guy that created the character of Venom. And then co-created, rather, with David Michelinie. And then, of course, Eric Larson. You've got Ron Lim here doing the vault, and I'm sure she talked about all this stuff here, too. So, here you have it. This is literally the first half of the Spider-Man vs. Venom omnibus, and they are calling it the Venom Epic Collection Volume 1 Symbiosis. Okay, so let's talk about a book I couldn't put down as soon as I got it in, and that is X-Men Empire, or rather Empire X-Men. This ties into the Empire event. And all of this stuff will be collected next year in an omnibus format, but this collects the four-issue miniseries X-Men Empire. And as you can see from here, there are everybody that's working on the amount of X-Books is working 
in this miniseries. As a matter of fact, all of this will be collected in the Dawn of X um, trade paperbacks that are coming out. So we have different writers, different artists tackling it on, and l you don't need to have read Empire at all. You, that's that's one question I'm sure I'm going to get. You don't need to have read Empire at all. All you need to know is that a horde of mutant zombies, not like Necrotia X, a lot different than that, are coming back, and then you have the Katati, who are these plant-like creatures, are invading the Earth. And then you have mutants on Krakoa, of course, a big island that's made of plants. They're kind of caught in the middle of all this. So you have characters like Black Tom Cassidy or Mondo that are have close ties to Mother Earth, but I'm not going to give much away except for one thing that I've really enjoyed. And it's at the end of issue one. This doesn't spoil much of anything, but it is the return of the Horde culture. It, so it's now alien plants versus mutant zombies versus old ladies. It's that type of book. At least the first two issues are. Actually, there are some really heartwarming moments in this book between Doug and another character, rather. Um, but I really enjoy that. I don't know. If, I think this might be Leah Williams writing some of this. Just I could tell by her use of dialogue. Of course, you got Jonathan Hickman, and you also have Jerry Duggan, Teeny Howard. So everybody pretty much involved with Dawn of X is writing this. Uh, this book has 112 pages and retails for $17.99. Now, let's check out these extras in the back. But I'm sure you probably saw when I was talking about this that they also have variants sometimes in the back of or opposite side of the standard edition covers. But let's look here in the back. Again, I am censoring that final page to just show off. This is the Todd Nock and Rochelle Rosenberg Variant cover, Marcus Toe, Lucas Wernick, and Salvador La Roca. When I saw this, I could have sworn it was Wills Portacio, though. That is a nice cover. Spine Gang Assemble. Now is a good time to remind everybody to hit that like button because it helps our channel grow with the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. And a good time for you to pause if you need to. Now, let's get back to this. So we have Marvelverse, Deadpool, and Wolverine. This is a 96 page, $9.99 uh, book that's geared towards kids, which is interesting when you have the character of Deadpool, right? Like you have to limit what stories you choose from the many years of Marvel. So they played it safe here because they went with Marvel Adventure Superheroes number four, Marvel Universe Ultimate Spider-Man Web Warriors number eight, which that one is based on the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, then there's the Free Comic Book Day 2009, which is the Wolverine origin of an X-Man storyline. See, this is the Ultimate uh, Spider-Man, which introduces Ultimate Deadpool to the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, not the Ultimate Spider-Man comic book. I know that sounds confusing, but I promise it, it's really not. And then it also contains Marvel Adventures Spider-Man number three. So let's look back here to look at those. So it's more of like their cartoon counterparts of these characters. So, you know, less Merc with a mouth and more of a cartoon hijinks. And let's we'll see if there's, they usually put extras here in the back, but this is some of the artwork. Again, the size of it is, these are gears towards kids. So you have Weapon X First Class, number one. This is a variant cover by Michael Ryan. It's interesting that they put that here. Oh, because it features Wolverine and Deadpool. Why did that even take me so long to figure that out? And Weapon X First Class number two. And speaking of covers, this one's interesting because this is Deadpool and Wolverine drawn by Ed McGinnis. However, this Deadpool image is from like 1996. It was a promotional ad. Uh, it was a house ad uh, for Deadpool, the new series that was drawn by Ed McGinnis and written by Joe Kelly. And then this Wolverine, I think it's fr it's from that uh, free comic book day issue. All right. Thor, the Devourer King. This is the new series by Donny Cates and Nick Klein, and they're joined by Matthew Wilson, who was the colorist on Jason Aaron's run on Thor. So, how in the world do you follow up Jason Aaron's magnificent run on Thor? Well, you have a kick-ass story that Donny Cates was able to do. I didn't see this coming, and I'm sure by now, this is going to be difficult because I can't show much of what happens in here uh, because I don't want to spoil this for anybody. But I'm sure you can probably tell by the cover here 
and some of the artwork in here that Thor looks different than he did in Jason Aaron's run. And I promise all of that is explained here because, you know, while, uh, not, never mind, I can't, I, I can't talk about it. Let's just forward a little bit here. This is some of Nick Klein's artwork who I was not really familiar with up until this run. Now, I wanted to show these pages, and normally I censor this, but honestly, I mean, come on, it's freaking Beta Ray Bill, who didn't see him making a return anytime soon, but I wanted to showcase that this is what they do. They put the variants on the opposite side of the standard edition cover, so now we're on issue three, and this is what the artwork looks like. I mean, that is just freaking beautiful. And I'm sure the question is, is this going to be collected in a Marvel Cosmic Universe by Donny Cates, Volume 2? Is it going to be collected in an oversized hardcover? I, I don't know. Right now, all I know is the first six issues are collected in this trade paperback. But, I mean, Donny Cates is a hot commodity, and it's Thor. And it is a lot different than Jason Aaron's Thor, but I really dig it. And I didn't think that was possible to do because, like I said, how do you follow up a run like Jason Aaron's Thor? Well, you take it somewhere differently. There are hints here of something called the Black Winter, so it might have ties to the King in Black, which is a big event happening later this year. And we're just going to look at a couple more pages, and then we're going to flip to the back to look at the extras. Uh, the book has 144 pages and retails for $17.99. And I am a liar, we're not gonna flip to the back because it literally ends on a huge cliffhanger and then we get ads on the opposite page. So there, all the variants are in between the issues. And last but not least is the Marvel Masterworks Volume 295. <laughs> Man, that is a long time they've been printing these. And this is The Defenders Volume 7 featuring issues 58 through 75. Let me get this off so we can look at it. It's been a long time since I've had a Marvel Masterwork, but Marvel was nice enough to send me this copy. Here are the flaps right here. And here are the books from the Golden Age, the Atlas Era, and then the House of Ideas, which, oh man, they've had 22 Amazing Spider-Man Masterworks. That's crazy. I used to have a lot of those. And then in the back, they always put the covers that are collected inside of the book from the issues. Uh, the book retails for $75, but let's get it open and talk a little bit about it. Let's bookend pages. And Marvel Masterworks presents The Defenders, Volume 7. These are always limited edition, by the way. This is the direct market cover. They always tell you in the back here, I want to say, that this printing is limited to 618 copies. So, I used to collect these. These are the ones that I sold many years ago. Man, look at that freaking credit page. That's crazy. That is a lot of inkers, letterers, and colorists. Uh, there's an introduction by Joe Duffy here, according to the table of contents. She was one of the right. I think she only wrote one issue in this run, though, because most of this stuff is done by Dak, David Anthony Kraft, and Ed Hannigan. So, yeah, here we are. Defenders. I just announced the newly solicited Defenders Omnibus Volume 1, uh, which collects more issues now than it did before. And here we are with issues 58 through 75 of this run. Uh, I'm sure from the original lineup, the only ones here are Hulk and probably the Submariner. Eh, no, but Doctor Strange hangs around a little bit, I think. But we are joined by three other characters. So let's talk about those first. We are joined by Valkyrie right here. And Valkyrie has a human side, kind of like what they did with Thor back in the day of Barbara Norris. And she fights with her dragon fang and rides on top of the winged horse, um, Aragorn. Aragorn. Um, we also have this guy right here, Kyle Richmond, Nighthawk, who I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, he was just a Batman ripoff. But honestly, I remember during um, this run right here, especially during Ed Hannigan's run, that he was kind of like a guy that took it upon himself to become leader of the team. But nobody really listened to him. He was the guy that paid for everything. He was rich, so he was a little bit like Batman. But he was the guy that paid for everything, and no one listened to him. That's all I remember. It's been years since I've read some of these issues of the Defenders. I'm mainly familiar with the new Defenders lineup. So it's always fun to go back and look at these. Oh, and Patsy Walker right there, Hellcat, who was 
a one of these um it was like a love comic back in the 50s so she has quite a history with the marvel universe and then eventually became hellcat so is that supposed to be steve gerber i can't remember uh, i know there was a character here that was oh no it was um brunhilde's uh, uh valkyrie's husband or her earth husband uh anyway it's a little complicated never mind forget i just said that let's just keep going through here um, so we have 340 pages of artwork from Herb Trimpe, Ed Hannigan, Sal Buscema, just to name a few of the talented artists that worked on this. And let's look here in the back for some extras. So this is the between covers of the Marvel Treasury Edition number 16, which reprinted that Marvel feature number one which is the first real appearance of the Defenders. This is House Ads. Sketch cover here from the Marvel Treasury Edition by Gil Kane. And then original art pages. I wonder if they send these off or scan them. I always wonder about the people that donate these original pieces of artwork. Sometimes they come from like charity auctions, but I always find it interesting like if they have to scan it themselves or if they trust people to scan the original pieces for them. There's that piece here by Herb Trimpe and Pablo Marcos, and then you have Sal Buscema and Don Perlin on the opposite page. Biographies of all the people. Uh, I think this is updated because this was printed in 2020, so there was that forward by Joe Duffy was written in 2020. And I think Herb is the only one that had passed away. And then, of course, where else you can find the masterworks. Now, let's. one of the questions I've gotten here, and this is going to be a pretty easy question to answer right now, is, is this the size of an oversized hardcover or an omnibus? And no, it is not. This book, this hardcover, this masterwork does retail for $75, though. So what you're really paying for is this top-notch just restoration of the artwork. And I know a lot of the people that have been collecting these, including myself when I, when I did collect them before I let them go about 10 years ago, uh, we appreciate this kind of stuff. I mean, there is a lot of work that goes into touching up this artwork. Uh, but that is a Marvel masterwork. It's the size of a trade paperback, really. And that, as they say, is that. Now, you can purchase these books from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you Minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest book, with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and the page count of each of these collected editions. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you are picking up. If you're waiting for a Thored oversized hardcover by Donny Cates or an omnibus. If you're waiting for an omnibus of the Nick Spencer Spider-Man. If you're still getting the Marvel Masterworks. And what do you think about Venom, the Epic Collection Volume 1? Are you picking that up? If you are into collecting epics, I would love to know all those comments down below. If you have any more questions, please also leave those down below. Don't forget that we have a Redbubble and a Patreon, and all of that information is in the description down below. And everybody, please stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love to all of you.